All right, it's time for another edition of The Blue Paint with Mike McKenna, some nerdy goaltending talk, and I love it. Who, Mike, I'm going to put you on the spot, who's been the best goaltender in the NHL over the last month? His name's Thatcher Demko, playing for the Vancouver Canucks. And I know everybody loves Bruce Boudreaux in that city right now, and they should. But, boy, they should be sending gift baskets to Thatcher Demko. His numbers since the in the past month, especially in December, I mean, 9-1 in his last 10 games. Okay, and during that span... Every single game, his save percentage has been above 90%. That's nearly impossible to do as a goaltender, that level of consistency. He's been a huge reason why the Canucks have turned it around. Yeah, Boudreaux's made some changes. The penalty kill's been way better, but you know why? It's because Demko's standing on his head during it. All right. I know his save percentage and his, his traditional numbers here, you see a 255, 920. They're not that gaudy. They're really good. But his advanced stats put him at the top of the heap no matter which way you look at it. And I think when you watch Demko play, he's so in control of his game. He's rarely outside of his crease. He's very controlled. He's eating rebounds. His game lends itself to consistency. He's done a great job in the last couple of years of modifying and modernizing his game with goalie coach Ian Clark. And I think if Demko can keep this up, He's going to at least get Vancouver back to respectability and possibly even looking at that outside looking in playoff spot. He's been the best goalie in the league since December 1st. Interesting. Yeah. And I have it on good authority that Thatcher Demko would have been a member of the U.S. Olympic team had uh, the NHL players gone. Beijing, certainly a bright spot in Vancouver. In Detroit, let's shine a little spotlight there because their crease was up for grabs at the start of the season. Alex Nedeljkovic, they acquired in a trade. He's really grabbed the reins. What's made Nedeljkovic separate himself? And a little bit of a two-part question. They drafted Sebastian Kosa in the first round. Not all that often you see a team spend a first-round pick on a goalie. Is there any chance that Nedeljkovic is actually their goalie of the future? Yeah, great question, Frank. I think that there actually is a chance of that because you can never tell with a draft pick and even a first-round goaltender, you still might be looking three to four years down the road before that goalie becomes an impact player at the NHL level. And what Nedeljkovic does is it buys the Red Wings time. But it also gives him a chance to grow into a number one role and maybe become that beast in the crease that they've needed there. Going into the year, they had Thomas Grice and Nedeljkovic, and it was it really was up for grabs. And that's what I want to key in on. Nedeljkovic's numbers, they're fairly pedestrian looking, 285914, but his advanced numbers, okay, he's up there with Demko. He's up there in that same ballpark as a Sorokin in Long Island, who's been very good this year. And there's a huge delta between Nedeljkovic and Grice right now. Okay, Grice is allowing three and a half goals a game. Nadelkovich is under three, and I think his puck handling is what makes a big difference for the for the or for the uh, Detroit Red Wings. He gets the puck moving. He gets it to those young players on the team. He gets it in motion, and that's invaluable. He had that hot run with the Hurricanes last season. I still think they should have held on to him. That's water under the bridge. He's found a good home in Detroit. It's another good trade by Steve Eiserman to get value and to get a goalie who is growing into himself at the NHL level. A little bit of a rough pass late, patch lately, but he's been good for most of the season. Yeah, I still can't believe Carolina didn't want to pay Nadelkovic to keep him. But then again, hard to knock Carolina and their goaltending decision. Freddie Anderson mm -hmm. has been absolutely fantastic this season. Mike, we talked at the beginning of the year about the need for teams to have three goaltenders, that it was going to be more important than ever to have three guys that you can turn to with COVID and injuries. Of those you know, sort of tertiary options in goal, which one this season has made a case for more playing time throughout the year? I think you can look to Charlie Lindgren in St. Louis, and it speaks for himself when you look at the statistics we're showing here. Five wins in five games, and he, he allowed five goals. <laughs> you know, I mean, what more can you want a guy to do? He's a perfect example of somebody that needed a change of scenery, needed a breath of fresh air, He'd been in the Montreal Canadiens system for four or five seasons. He was on a three-year one-way contract. He could never make it stick at the NHL level. Now, behind Carey Price, you're not going to get a lot of time. And then at the American League, when he went down, the team was terrible in Laval. So he was set up for failure there. He's been rolling this year. It started in the American League. He's 8-1-1 there. And then he goes 5-0-0 at the NHL level. He's now the guy that you look to thinking, man, he deserves a bigger opportunity at the NHL level. Don't know if it'll happen in St. Louis. Villa Huso's back from uh, an injury. He's played well this year. Bennington, of course, is the guy. But there's always goalies like this that make a name for themselves once again. And I think that it just speaks to the bigger overall picture of this season, especially that teams need the goalie depth 
We've seen so many number one goaltenders, whether it's your injury or COVID. Uh, you know, last night in Vegas, Logan Thompson starts his first NHL game because Laurent Brossois and Robin Leonard are both unavailable. We've seen Brian Elliott and Vasilevsky out in Tampa. You know, depth is so important for these teams. And someone like Rit Lindgren that you can trust is very important. Yeah, trust, no doubt, a factor. Perhaps I should add Charlie Lindgren to our trade targets list. Teams are always looking for a guy that could slide in. St. Louis, as you mentioned, pretty comfortable with Bennington and Huso. Uh, interesting stat from Elliot Friedman in his 32 Thoughts column yesterday on sportsnet.ca, and that was 97 netminders have been used this season. We're not quite 50% of the way through. The previous record is 99, so we're going to crush that. Mike, you've got your towel on. Yeah, man. ready. You need I the am. proper tuck on the bench. You, you pioneered it. You got to yeah, cross it, go. put it underneath the jersey. You're good to go. <laughs> hey, you, you did say that your New Year's resolution was to play more goalie. I don't know that it's going to be at the NHL level, but hey, we love having you on the Blue Paint to talk more goaltending. This has been another edition of the Blue Paint with Mike McKenna.